For years, the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has been notorious for swooping into developing countries and warning them about how they're managing or mismanaging their economies, saying they need to raise their interest rates, pass austerity measures, even drop Bitcoin as legal currency in one case. But since 2020, the world has felt a little upside down. And this week, that's even become the case with the IMF. That's because the international agency just gave a damning verdict, as CNBC put it, on the latest economic plan coming out of the world's sixth biggest economy. Yes, my old home, the United Kingdom. The IMF said flatly this week they do not recommend the UK's proposed mini budget that's filled with tax cuts for the rich and extra borrowing, a package the IMF called large and untargeted. They warned it could increase inequality. It's the kind of public criticism we've rarely seen addressed to a major Western economy. As economic journalist Larry Elliott wrote in The Guardian, it's hard to overstate just how severe an embarrassment the dressing down from the IMF is for the government, which has been told to rethink last week's mini-budget. The blunt language used by the IMF spokesperson was the sort normally reserved for a struggling emerging market economy seeking financial support. So, what gives? Well, the UK has had a new Prime Minister since September the 6th. Boris Johnson's gone. Liz Truss is the new PM, and she came in after Johnson resigned over various political scandals too numerous for me to list here. Last week, Truss's new government delivered its awaited economic agenda, a mini-budget, and it didn't go so well. Britain's new vision leaves onlookers with nightmares, is how Reuters headlined it. That's because Truss and her Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng, announced the most sweeping tax cuts since 1972, cutting hugely popular taxes on the wealthy and on corporations. They're the biggest tax giveaways in half a century, and they're giveaways to the rich. They also announced an extra £70 billion of government borrowing to subsidise energy bills that have been soaring since the war in Ukraine began. This plan from Truss and Co. is going to cost the UK £161 billion over the next five years. Not the most prudent proposal from prudent Conservatives when the country is already facing its highest inflation for 40 years. The news sent the pound crashing to a record low against the US dollar figures that we haven't seen since 1985. It's all why the IMF issued its warning on Tuesday. It said the plan would undermine efforts to manage inflation and could have ripple effects across the world. On Wednesday, the Bank of England stepped in too, buying up almost $70 billion of UK government bonds to help avert a financial crisis. The bank said in a statement, would dysfunction in this market to continue or worsen, there would be a material risk to UK financial stability. Wow. So you'd think Liz Truss would be trying to do damage limitation, but it wasn't until Thursday morning that she emerged to do a round of media interviews, a lot of them with local radio stations. Perhaps... Just perhaps she was expecting an easier ride with the local folks. And, well, listen for yourself. I am really glad that you are here as well, because since Friday, since your Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's mini-budget, the pound has dropped to a record low. The IMF has said that you should re-evaluate your policies, and the Bank of England has had to spend £65 billion to prop up the markets because of what they describe as a material risk. Where have you been? Where have you been? Perhaps the next question is, where is she going? Could Liz Truss, who hasn't been in office for even a month, now soon be on her way out the door? Could Britain be getting ready for its fifth prime minister in six years? Joining me now to discuss this is Guardian columnist Owen Jones, who's based in the UK. He's also the author of Chavs, The Demonization of the Working Class and the Establishment and How They Get Away With It. Owen, thanks so much for coming on the show. What is going on in the UK? Aren't the Conservative Party supposed to be the party of economic competence, of financial markets, of stability? Isn't this supposed to be a new prime minister enjoying her honeymoon in office? Well, the former aide to Boris Johnson, Dominic Cummings, who turned on Boris Johnson, as it should be said, described Liz Truss as a human hand grenade. I think a human nuclear bomb is more apt. Look, when the Conservatives um, first, their polling lead collapsed, when it was pr showed they'd partied illicitly during the pandemic, I said they'd essentially douse themselves in petrol and set themselves on fire. With this latest calamity, and it is a calamity, by the way, it's worth just taking that into, I'm sure we'll talk about it, they've nuked themselves. A new poll suggests that the Tories are now 33 points behind the Labour Party. One election analysis suggested that that would mean 
every single Conservative MP in Britain, every single one losing their seats. Unlikely to be replicated at a general election, but I think that just shows the scale of the crisis. Yes. There's no precedent, no precedent in democratic history for a British government being in such a big crisis. And just to be clear about what's happened, after, uh, before the Queen died, the government was forced to intervene to cap energy bill prices because otherwise there would be essentially a social calamity in this country. £7,000 a year energy bills. People can't afford that. The Queen died. Then they introduced a mini budget, £45 billion worth of unfunded cuts, slashing taxes on the rich. They didn't even provide projections about what that would mean in the economy. And the markets did not like it. They rebelled. The pound sank. The pension funds nearly went under. This is a genuine national crisis. So Entirely done, by the way, because the Conservative government decided to wage class war on the part of the top 1%. Yeah, I mean, the tax cuts are all to the rich. And you mentioned the poll. This is a YouGov poll, 33 points ahead, the Labour Party is. And we'll talk about Labour in a moment. But for me, the scale of the crisis from where I'm sitting in the United States, the scale of the crisis is not 33-point lead, which is crazy. But talk of Boris Johnson, the former prime minister who had to resign in disgrace over his lies about holding parties during lockdown. Talk of him coming back and replacing her. How is that a real possibility, Owen? I think that's entirely possible. I think the two contenders now to take over either him or Rishi Sunak, who was the chancellor under Boris Johnson, though those two fell out. He also stood against Liz Truss, it should be said. Himself a right-wing ideologue, but not as unhunched as her, and he did warn what her economic plans would mean. But Boris Johnson was deposed. He brought the Tories an 80-seat majority in 2019. That was thanks to riding the Brexit wave, promising to get Brexit done after two and a half years of delay and crisis and all the rest of it. But because he part he, in number 10 in Downing Street, at the heart of government, there were all these parties which were then revealed. He lied to the British people about it and he was removed. But he believed at the time that this was unfair, unjust. He didn't really think he did anything wrong. And people around him began immediately planning for his return. He said when he resigned, we're not even that far behind in the polls, certainly not compared to where they are now, to be fair to them. Um, and I think there was a belief that Liz Truss, who succeeded him, would be so catastrophic that she wouldn't last very long. I have to say that pre that prediction is turning out to be pretty apt. And that what? amongst the rubble, he would say, look, guys, look at what's happened when someone succeeded me. The Conservative polling lead has collapsed. The worst polling now imaginable. I'm the only one who brought the Conservatives yeah. an election victory in the last 30 years and with a, lands with a majority. What? What is it with the blonde right-wing fake populists on both sides of the Atlantic who just won't go away, insist on getting their jobs back? I don't know. Let's talk about the opposition <laughs> Labour Party. Where are they in all of this? I know you're not the biggest fan of Labour leader Keir Starmer. You think he's not left-wing enough. But now, after 12 years out of power, as you mentioned, they are polling uh, pretty good, a 33-point astonishing lead over the Conservatives, according to a new YouGov poll. Um, is Keir Starmer heading for Downing Street in a year or two, or no? I think almost certainly heading for Downing Street now, not because of things he's done, it's because the Tories embroiled themselves in scandal. And then for the first... And we do need to be very clear here, no government has triggered this sort of economic disaster by announcing a budget. It just hasn't happened. You could talk about the financial crash in 2008, which was a global event. This type of crisis, there's no precedent. So what's happened is the government has destroyed their support base. Bear in mind, for example... The main support of the Conservatives, their heart, most hardened support, is amongst pensioners. The British Prime Minister could not confirm that people's pensions were safe today. That's their support base. So Keir Starmer, yes, I've had my big criticisms of him. When he stood to be leader, he promised to stand on a raft of popular transformative policies like, like public ownership of utilities, like taxing the rich. He abandoned them. But to be fair, he's moved closer towards them at the recent Labour conference. But above all else, it's not thanks to anything he's done. He could have spent the last yeah. few weeks saying nothing and sitting back <laughs> when a ruling party causes such an economic catastrophe purely through their own ideological uh, crazed schemes. The opposition is going to benefit, and that's what's happened right now. 
Quick last question to you. You tweeted this week that this catastrophe isn't all on Truss and Quateng. This is the logical end point of a 43-year-long Thatcherite experiment. Explain to our viewers why that is and what exactly you mean by that. Such an important point. Thatcherism began in 1979, and it was about battering the trade unions. It was about slashing taxes on the rich. It was about privatization. It was about removing the state from, uh, from society. And that was cheered on by the think tanks, Tory MPs and right-wing newspapers. It didn't produce growth. The growth we've had since then has been much weaker on average than it was before. We've had repeated recessions in the 90s, in the early 80s, the financial crash. Inequality yeah. got much bigger. Living standards have stagnated. And the ultimate culmination of what this was, which was to funnel wealth up to the top 1%, was this budget. It was Thatcherism, red in tooth and claw. Yeah. And it has caused total disaster. So don't just pin this on Liz Truss. Don't just pin this on the I Conservatives wonder... today. This was four decades in the making.